Good morning and welcome to your Farm and Home Show. My name is Joanna Coles and this morning we're visiting with Dr. Travis Leglider. He's with the University of Kentucky Extension Weed Scientist there. Good morning, Travis. Good morning, Joanna. Now, Travis, I'm glad you're here today because you're going to talk about a particular pest <laughs> that um, a lot of people, I think we've had seen more concern with this particular weed. Yes. So uh, what, what I'm going to be talking about today is Italian ryegrass. Uh, many people also know it as annual ryegrass, so it's all the same. Uh, but yeah, this is a weed that I think uh, in Kentucky, everybody's known about it for a while. And we've always considered it kind of a weed and wheat. Um, but it, it it is quickly climbing. I guess I try to keep my top five list or top five most wanted weeds, if you will. Um, and it keeps quickly climbing that list as a problematic weed for me. Uh, I get, I've gotten more calls on it the last couple of springs uh, than I have really any other weed. And we would, we would assume that being in wheat, cause they're both similar, but you've seen this be a problem in other crops as well. Yes. Yeah. So like I said, in wheat, it's, it's obvious because they're both winter annuals, right? Uh, but uh, we've started having more issues with it in corn specifically, but even in soybean as well. Okay. And is it because, do you think it's a, a resistance issue or just a, you know, we just have more of it? What might be the the underlying cause there? So I think it's a little bit of all that plus some other things. So uh, we do we do have glyphosate resistant ryegrass in the state now. So we've now confirmed three populations within the state and those are kind of scattered throughout the state. It's not like it's just in one area. So, uh, you know, they're scattered throughout the state where we found them. And we've gotten multiple other complaints from guys uh, that have had failures uh, on ryegrass with multiple applications of glyphosate. So we haven't been able to confirm those as a resistant, but uh, we're sure there's more of it out there than those other three populations. Uh, the other issue I think we're having is we're having more of it, but also the weather conditions. So with ryegrass, it's really important that we get the right weather conditions when we burn it down. Um, so it needs to be nice and warm. So 45 degrees at night, a couple of days before and a couple of days after the application and the ryegrass needs to be small and you need to be look at the sprayer across the field. Those are three conditions, if you think back to this last spring, that just never occurred. And so it caused a lot of issues. Um, and I think that's something that really contributed to some of the failures we've had the last couple of years. And the other thing we need is we need to make sure we have glyphosate in the tank. So last year we had a glyphosate shortage. So that didn't help either. A lot of guys were trying things without glyphosate, saw a lot of failures with that. So, um, and when you're spraying glyphosate, we need guys to be using at least a pound and a half of glyphosate. That's a lot of glyphosate. That's more than we typically use in burn downs. But for ryegrass, we've shown you have to have that rate to be effective and those weather conditions to be really be effective against ryegrass. So we prefer that ryegrass to be less than six to eight inches tall. If a farmer knows that they've had ryegrass issues, it's probably good to go ahead and get on that early as possible. If you know you have a problem, catching that window is very important. Yes, yeah. So if you can, if we start getting some warm days uh, into February, March, um, getting on top of those populations will really help you out quite a bit. So um, make sure you have a plan. Uh, the other thing you can do, it's too late for this year, but going into next fall, if you have some bad fields, uh, we do have products you can put on in the fall as well as a residual to help you out. And then you'll probably still need to burn down in the spring, uh, but uh, it, you can check into some of our corn and soy newsletters to see where we've uh, highlighted some of those products you can use in the fall. So once you get into the fall, so that's, you know, that's where you need to start looking for ryegrass and those fields you've historically had issues in the past. Even if you killed it all this year, you probably still, still have some seed in the seed bank. So it's good to go back in the fall, scout those fields, see uh, what's coming up. And then that's where uh, we can make those fall applications to burn down what's there because it's really small so we can handle it and put down a residual. And and Travis, if somebody is out there, they feel like they have a population of glyphosate resistant, do, do they need to contact their county agent so you guys can take a look at that or maybe document that? Yeah, so if, if you uh, are struggling with ryegrass or you've sprayed it a couple times and can't control it with glyphosate, uh, let your agent know um, so they can let us know. Uh, unfortunately, right now we're kind of limited in how much we can test, uh, but uh, we can at least document it and we can even uh, possibly come to field and, and walk through the possibilities of that. Now that we've confirmed three populations, we know it's out there. Um, we'll tr continue to kind of look, but if you failed multiple times with glyphosate, uh, the best thing to do is try something different. Uh, don't wait for us to tell you it's resistant. All right, Travis, we'll certainly appreciate the information. And if you have questions, make sure to contact your local extension office. Thanks for watching and have a great day.